Hi, my name is Erin Virtue, and I'm an assistant coach with the U.S. Women's National Team. In this video, we're going to look at some examples of tools and strategies for running an effective offense. Whether you're a coach, an athlete, a fan, or a parent, there are some excellent examples in this from our Women's National Team of the how and the why we run what we run. I read this really interesting article a few months ago titled, Who is More Important, the Quarterback or the Offensive Coordinator? You can and should ask yourself the same question. This is a fun debate to have when you are looking for quarterbacks to join your team. We may, we may not all be Bill Walsh, and we may not all have a Joe Montana on our team. My hope is today to teach the coaches in the room a little bit more about the ways that we can sharpen our offensive coordinator swords and eyes to make sure that we are continuing to be the best that we can to help prepare the Montana hopefuls. And by the way, the author of the article didn't give a real answer. He said both are most important, and I agree. When I first started out coaching, I had just finished a nice career as a setter. So jumping into an offensive coordinator role, I probably thought that I would scout a team and things would go as planned. Just take a look at the picture of he here of me calling a play like a boss and being certain that the following play would result in a kill. Fast forward 100 years later when I'm on the national team staff, and I know that is not always going to be the case. We have to train and prepare for plan A, plan B, plan C, and then be ready for the opponent to alter the course and we implement plan D. And for the record, I'm still learning all the time. I love this quote from the book, A More Beautiful Question by Warren Berger. A more beautiful question is an ambitious yet actionable question that can shift the way we think about something and may serve as a catalyst for change. As coaches, we should be asking beautiful questions about our team and studying to find the answers. Here's some sample questions to get you started about your offense. What are our setter's strengths offensively? What are our weaknesses offensively? What is my setter's range? Setter's strengths? How fast can we go? How fast should we go? I ask these questions a lot. How and should we implement the back row attack? How many routes should we have at what time? And which routes? We are going to cover six offensive concepts and tactics, and I'd encourage you to think about how to implement these concepts or others into your training sessions. First, we're going to talk about attacking space. There are two examples of attacking space where we're going to have four attackers against three blockers. In this first clip, we'll see USA against Argentina, and we're running a go, tight, quick, red, and 30. We'll show it again. Here you can see we've created space for Kelsey Robinson between the right side blocker and the middle blocker. Notice Tori is running close to the setter, and we create four against three. In this next clip against Japan, we're running a go, slide, and two back row attacks. You can see Michelle Barch on the 30 and Carcelo running in the space between the left side blocker and the middle blocker on the C. Number 25, Karsta, creating space for here right up into this gap. The next strategy is isolate. The goal of isolation is to create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. In these three clips, you'll see the opponent middle blockers playing close attention to our USA middle blocker. Versus Brazil, you can see Chiaka on the tight quick, leaving Kelsey Robinson one-on-one -on, -one on the go. And you can notice the middle blocker for Brazil paying close attention to our middle blocker leaving one-on-one -on -one here on the go. Again, you can see Brazil's middle blocker paying close attention to ours on the gap, now running one step away. 
and leaving Annie one on one on the red attack on the right side. Versus Serbia, you could see Kelsey is one on one on the go. Middle blocker focused a lot and even committing on our tight quick. This is something we would have scouted knowing that middle blocker 14 is going to focus a lot on the tight quick when it's a good, a good or great pass. In all of these various situations, they're all creating one-on-one -on -one opportunities for our attackers by isolating them. The next tactic is an overload. The goal of an overload is to have two attackers running into one blocker zone or their area to overload that blocker. In this first clip against Bulgaria, you'll see USA running a gap with Haley Washington and a go with Kim Hill. It doesn't always look that awesome, but here you see right side blocker number six staying in to help on the gap and is obviously late to get to the go. She is overloaded having two blockers in her zone. Against Japan, left side blocker number seven, we're gonna overload her. As you can see, as we run it again, she stays in to help on the quick attack and is late to get to the pin attack on the red. In this next clip against China, we set into the overload. So we set into the gap and you can see middle blocker number 17 and right side blocker, they're not sure which set we're going to set here. So we set into the quick on this example. In this one versus China, we set over. So the same play, we run a gap and we run a go, both in this zone overloading right side blocker number 11. So she's late to get there on the go. Here we can see a split. And the thing I want you to focus on is our setters form and technique. It's really important that we work with our setters on being neutral. So we'll watch it again. And I want you to watch Jordan Poulter, our setter here in both of these clips, as neutral as she is, that's the key to making sure this is an effective tactic. It's being able to run it deceptively. Our next three tools that we're gonna talk about will often be a reaction to the adjustments that opponent blockers will make throughout a match or in various stressful situations. First, gonna, we're gonna look at when there's no help from the, from the pins. Um, in an opponent blocking system, no help from the pin blockers and they're focused on helping to block the quick attack. The pins are spread out. We want to attack up the gut or into the middle third of the court. In all three of these examples, you'll start to see the left and right side blockers start a little wider and leave early to focus on their pin attacker. This leaves the middle or the middle third or the gut of the court open for quick and back row BIC options. Often this is an adjustment from blockers, maybe once we've overloaded them or isolated them, or we've beat them on the pin with our speed. Something to scout ahead of time, or and make sure we know the tendency of these opponent blockers. You'll see them spread way out and leave us one-on-one -on -one up the gut. Sometimes opponent middle blockers will decide to move early toward a given attacker, usually to the left or to the right. We have to study these tendencies and have a plan for them and be ready to adjust throughout the match. In all of these examples, you will see the middle blocker from the opponent moving early to block or go on the left side. You will see a few different solutions that we came up with to attack this early scheme.
Here you'll see middle blocker number 14 moving early to the go, and we run a slide to combat that early movement. We'll see middle blocker number three, also with an early move to the go, and we run a bick. Up the gut is a great option when someone's trying to run an early scheme on us. Here we'll see it again. Number three makes this early move. Our setter knows this plan, knows this tendency, sees their move, and runs the bick. We'll see another option on the bick. This time we run it behind. We know two things about this middle. One, the tendency to move early, and two, the tendency to move with our setter. Another option might be this one. An early move leaves some space for our setter to be aggressive. When a setter moves along the net, it's important to make a note of how the opponent middle blocker reacts. If the middle blocker moves with the setter, you may want to consider the long string or the long ball. If the middle blocker stays to read, stays in the middle of the court, you may want to consider the short string or the short set. Let's watch a few examples. On the long string, the long ball that we set backward, we call the jack. So you can see middle blocker number 20 for Brazil, moving with our setter as she steps, just even just one step forward. We know we wanna try to be really aggressive with the jack in this situation. The long string forward, we call it Jill. So middle blocker number six, you can see she's really interested in our setter. She takes a step toward our setter. So going long forward is a great option in this scenario. In the short string, again, these work best when the middle blockers are reading. So here you can see China's middle blocker is reading. And so the short string, the quicker set to the slide is the better choice. Lauren knows this and then sets Shiaka on the slide. Similarly, in Japan, against Japan, middle blocker number five stays really neutral in reading. You can see she doesn't move at all here. Middle blocker number five. So the short ball is the harder ball to defend. As Jordan moves into this short zone, setting the slide is the tougher ball for the middle blocker to defend. As offensive coordinators, it's important to scout two types of teams. The opponent, of course, and yourself. Remember to ask beautiful questions about your own offense and your own quarterbacks, as well as the opponent's defensive system. This is a homework assignment that our setters worked through last summer when we were only one year out from Tokyo Olympics 1.0. I gave them two tasks. Number one, watch at minimum three matches that you quarterbacked this summer. Use the statistics and scout questions to create a setter tendencies scouting report on yourself. Number two, using what you learned, generate three to five big rocks or points of focus for yourself, technically or tactically, to work on over the next 355 days. In the stats portion over here, this is a distribution analysis by rotation. Sorry, it's so small to read but we have every rotation and then the overall total. So we can know the distribution of who we, who we set in system, who we set in transition, and how efficient are we, and what is the reception pattern in that rotation. So that was one thing that our setters needed to look at. The other was to look at the setter scout questions. These are tendencies and tells based on technique, the time of the match, what point in the match it is. Is it early in the match? Is it late in the match? Is it match point? Is it after a timeout? And then there are certain attacker preferences. Are we overloading? Are we isolating? Um, are you setting a setter, setting a hitter after an error? 
this was a great way for our setters to take initiative in learning about ourselves, themselves, and creating goals for the upcoming training se session and matches. As we have covered, it's important to know and study your opponent. When you're scouting, make sure you're scouting opponent blockers versus your own team. So I watch a lot of our opponent best teams in the world against USA. And then also opponents that are also like you. So you'll see in an example in a later clip, a later slide, I'll show examples of um, Turkey against the opponent or Netherlands against the opponent. Someone who's running maybe at a similar speed to USA, those are going to be great ones for us to also look at. So see how opponent blocks react to not only your own team, but maybe in that same tournament or in that with that same um, focused lineup. And then know when to use which tool. So if a team is having a lot of help from pins, so they're maybe packed in a little bit more, we want to overload. If there's no pin help at all and they're spread out, we want to run up the gut on the quick and the bick. If the middle blocker is fronting or getting in front of our middle blocker, we want to look to isolate, run along string, attack into space. If a middle blocker stays in the read, we're going to attack the short string. If they're scheming, we're going to plan, we're going to read, and we're going to attack the space. So here we're going to show a sample scout video uh, put together for Thailand. I mixed it up a little bit, um, not exactly what we just showed, but this is an example of something we would show to our setters for sure and our team. Again, this is video of either with USA against Thailand or teams like us versus Thailand. First, you'll see against the 6-2 rotation, so when our setter's in the back row, a few keys, and we'll break them apart, starting with the isolate. Here we'll see a few different examples, and we've covered isolate, so I want you to be able to look for that. Thailand's middle getting really interested in the middle, the offensive quick, and giving us lots of chances to run one-on-one -on, -one on the pins. So we should see their middle starting to front or get in front of the attacking middle. And that will give a lot of opportunities for the pin one-on-one. -on -one. Moving with a lot of space away from the quick. We'll show some teams having some success against opponents, but that won't always be the case. We'll see some examples of that later. Here we'll see the quick one-on-one. -on -one. That's another way of saying we don't see a lot of pin help, as we covered earlier. Pins are a little bit more spread out, not a lot of help on the quick. That will tell our setters when we're in the pocket, we can be aggressive. Versus the four two rotations when our setters in the front row, we'll see the middle blocker taking one step toward the go, or maybe just starting toward the go, as you'll see here. There you can see that offense was run into it, so that's okay. It's good for our setters to see that. What is Thailand doing when they set into their trap? Again, we'll see this middle stepping early toward her right or toward the go, and they were successful on that one. Again, middle blocker starting already out here. No interest in going to her left. Our setters know they'd have a lot of range to go behind. Already over here, a lot of range on the slide. Early toward the go, another solution that they came up with. Packed in, you'll see the left side blocker in a 4-2 rotation is packed all the way in here. She's really, really interested on the quick leaving a ton of space for the D-ball. We'll see one more example of this. Left side blocker all the way in here on the quick and on the setter, leaving a ton of space for the D. Our right sides and opposites love when left side blockers get packed in. In this example, we know that with Faluka Akinradenwu, 
They love to trap the slide. So their early scheme is to the slide when she's up attacking. So we know this, we saw that tendency and we are able to set away from it. Against this type of team who's really, really good on defense, I also like to make sure I include on the scouting a really long rally and the FIVB calls that a mega rally. This will make sure I can emphasize to our attackers and our setters that we got to work really, really hard in transition, turning and running off the net, setters making sure we're stopped and seeing the digger, and making really, really good choices throughout the rally. This is also the crazy fans and the very, very loud fans that Thailand has reminding our team to be loud, early, and often with our set and offensive calls. It's also a very, very fun place to play. Thank you for listening. I hope you were able to take away a few keys to help you run a more effective offense. And like me, I hope you are always looking for ways to continue to get better. Thank you and go USA. Mm -hmm.